Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Limit Wednesday video where I show you all of the crafty goodness I've been working on in the past week. I also brought a little friend with me today. This is my favorite mug. I have some tea in it. I love the, I think it's Tazio tea, but it's a passion flavor. I, I don't drink the black teas. I like more of the herbal, and this one has... I like hibiscus plants and I like hibiscus in my tea apparently. So this is a nice pretty red color and I just made myself some tea this morning because tea sounded really good today. Since I had received this as a gift, it was full of flowers earlier this year as a little, life has been tough so here's a little pick me up so thank you very much. I just wanted to show the person that sent this. I really still appreciate it and I use this mug all the time. I do have one of my funky coasters on it because it just seems to be the shape of the mug. First of all, don't put lotion on your hands and then try to hold a coffee mug or anything because it makes it very slippery. This mug has a nice shape to it and it's really huge so it takes about one and a half of my normal coffee cups that I use, but it has this rounded ridge on it that it always makes me dribble a little bit. So I keep a coaster underneath it for the protection of the heat and to catch my messy tea drinking. But it's way too hot to drink right now, so I set it aside. So let me show you what I've been working on this week in the craft room. I was all out of, thank you, I'm thinking of you, here's for the code word at the end of the video, postcards. So I made some fabric postcards. I just made some really simple ones to send out as thank yous that are mostly just one fabric, but they're still a novelty fabric, so they're really fun. And then the backs of them are just really simple. I draw the line down the center that you put on a postcard, and instead of writing postcard, I sign it R.S. Island Crafts in the year 2022. And then I just use a variety of threads to stitch around it. Sometimes I use whatever thread I use to quilt it, and I used the little feathery arrow type looking thing for my stitches, the cupcakes, and here's some kitchen items. Don't know if you can see the thread, so I won't keep showing it to you. I had some of this flowers. I used it for something else, so I just went, this is all like scraps. Oh, I was cleaning the fabric room next door where I keep all of the big yardage of fabric and stuff, and I found one of my little plastic baskets that had a bunch of novelty fabrics that were chunks, not fat quarters, not yardage, not small bits, not colors to go in there. So just what are you going to do with them? So I just kept them in there. So I went through there and I just pulled out pieces of fabric that would be large enough and that kind of intrigued me and made me smile. So there was some of these flowers and I added a purple checkered plaid type thing to the bottom and there was enough to make two. And then I also had this world fabric, this space fabric, but it wasn't enough to do anything on its own. I couldn't, I could make it probably into a coin, a little zipper coin pouch or something, but I just thought they were more fun as fabric postcards. I made two of these, but I already sent one out to a friend as a thinking of you. This is more of a upholstery type fabric, maybe something for pillows. And I added the pink to the bottom. I didn't have anything to match the pink in the car. So I thought just I'll go ahead and put any kind of pink on the bottom and then use pink thread around it. I have this one. I haven't decided if I'm gonna send this one out or keep it for myself. I know I have a little bit of this fabric left, so I'll have to see how much I have, if it's enough to make a fabric postcard for myself. So when I really love a fabric postcard, I try to keep one for my collection. And then it's a great way to use that special fabric up that's only just a little bit. So you get to keep it for yourself and I can hang it up and do whatever I want with it or just leave it in a container and look at it occasionally. Sometimes I haven't hung up my fabric postcard yet. So sometimes I like to just flip through them and look at the ones that people have sent me and ones that I've made. This is some Orioles. I had to double check with a friend to make sure I thought they were Orioles and I, I could have Googled it, but I kind of like to get my friends involved and say, hey, am I thinking about this the right way? And this has a hummingbird on it. So unfortunately, this is the salvage up here. 
so I couldn't actually get the entire hummingbird on. The salvage was very obvious a salvage, and I don't mind using it in a fabric po postcard, but the holes were really quite visible. So I just went ahead and trimmed it up, and I thought this was still fun. And with the 4th of July coming up, I just had a little bit of this fabric. I pretty sure I have some yardage of it, but in that container I had just a little bit, so I put it on there. Had a little birdhouse piece. This is from yardage that I have, and it's it's not a panel, but it's like a row by row by row. It's like a border fabric. So you get it by the yard, but then you can just either use it as is or cut it into border fabrics. And then I had a little scrap of beach from one of the projects I made, and not enough for the postcard. So I have this, it's a little polka dot. It's a, like a tan on tan, so a tone on tone polka dot. So that was really fun. So I thought I'd add that on to the beach. So I will be giving away one of these to someone who uses the code word at the end of this video. So huge welcome to all the new people that have been joining our little community. I've had several questions about what is a code word. So if you watch my videos from the beginning to the end, somewhere towards the end, I'll give you a code word for that video. So maybe today's code word, I might say, okay, I'll give you the code word now and you won't have to wait till the end of the video. But I might say code word for today is beach. So when you go down below in the comments and you use the word beach, you can just put the word beach in a comment and leave and that'll be it. Or you can use it in a sentence like, I love to go to Myrtle Beach. I've never been to the beach. I don't care for the beach because I always get sand in my shoes and that I don't like it. Now I love the beach. I don't like the crowds that we have at the beach now and I'm not a fan of the sun. I know I live in Florida and also no, the beach is fun to the ocean. Well, we have the Gulf of Mexico. It's fun to a certain point, but when you can no longer see what's in the water, and I was fine for a while as a kid, but in our Fort Myers beach, we tend to get these little fish that they come periodically. They're not every year. They're not all summer long, but they do show up and they show up in these big packs and they bite you. So it's not like really bad, but it's like little nibbles against your legs all the time while you're in the water. And then you have to worry about any other little creatures that are in there. And it's not that big of a deal, but I do prefer the pool. The beach is fun though, and I do like to go, but I don't like to deal with all the crazy people. Cause you're like this sometimes. You put your towel down and there's someone right there. Like you can't go like this because there's someone right there next to you and you can smack them. That's how busy the beaches get because it's Florida. Okay, and then with the code word, what I'll do is periodically, I don't do it for every video and I don't do it all the time. I will go through and I will leave a comment under someone else's comment, either because I love the comment or because I know maybe that person has been having a tough time. They mentioned it in a live stream or they've sent me another comment saying that, you know, their, their dog is missing or whatever it might be going on. I might pick that person. But most of the time I just use the random number comment generator thing that they have here that you can use on your YouTube comments. And I can put in the word code word, whatever what it is. So I can put in beach and it'll pull up all the comments where someone used the word beach in their comment. And then it'll randomly draw one of those people for a winner. I'll leave a comment below saying congratulations. You want a fabric postcard for using the code word. Please send me your mailing address and I'll give you my email, which is always rsilentcrafts at gmail.com down below in the description box. And when you send me your mailing address, I send you out a fabric postcard. It comes in a plastic sleeve. I never write on it. So you can actually either display your postcard and know that no one's going to read the back of it and 10 years from now wonder why you were getting this from some crazy person named Robin on YouTube for a code word. Or you can go ahead and use it as a postcard and just pop it in the mail just as is. These can mail just like they are. Write your, your little message, write the address, put a stamp on it, and off it goes just as it is. I like to put plastic sleeves on mine so that they stay nice and secure and I don't have to worry about anything getting dirty or stepped on. Now, all the ones I've received that come without a plastic sleeve have been perfectly fine, so there's no problem, but I kind of like the plastic sleeve. So that is what the code word is about. And the other part of it, it just shows that you watch the video from the beginning to the end, that you are, 
you know, you're a loyal follower. And just because you don't watch the video to the beginning to the end, that doesn't mean you're not a loyal follower either. Because many people watch the videos and they don't want to use the code word or they run out of time and they have to come back later and watch the rest of it. Some people just don't leave comments, but it's just a fun little game. Bonus. If you want to leave a comment and you don't know what to say except everyone else above you said, oh Robin, I love your fiber postcards and you don't want to be that person, now you've got something to say and leave a comment without sounding like every other person above you. Because that's how I view it. I have a hard time leaving comments on some videos because it's all like, your blue quilt is gorgeous. My favorite color is purple too. Ooh, your brownies look so yummy. And everyone has said that 150 comments before me, 200 comments after me, whatever, everyone has said the same thing. But if I have a code word, it makes it easier for me. All right, enough about that. Let me show you what else I've been working on. While going through that scrap bin, I also found a bunch of other fabrics and I made some zipper pouches. So I made this butterfly fabric. It has got purple and teal butterflies. Just not butterflies. It has purple and teal umbrellas on it. I don't have any butterflies. And the background is, it's that purple that reads a little bit blue. Same fabric on both sides. I used a light purple on the inside. Again, scraps. So none of this, now it's not to my tiny scraps, it's my larger scraps, obviously. I didn't have to piece anything, all one fabric. And then I put a fun little tassel on it and I have my little label, just slightly crooked, but it's okay. On the outside here, these are my old labels from a while ago. I found them while working in the cleaning that's where that story was going. I was cleaning in the room next door and I found those scraps. I found my labels. I think I only have like 10 or 12 left. So I found those. They are all off of a roll of twill tape so you can have labels printed that way. Here's another one that has that label. This is the pinky purple color with some flowers on it. Same on both sides. Nice fun tassel and more of the purple fabric on the inside because if you're going to be doing it, you may as well just keep using the same. I have some apples. I went with the red plaid because apples are red and buffalo plaid is really popular. And also green apples, so I put green on the inside with a red tassel. Now all of these pouches will be in the shop by the time you see this video. I haven't put them in there yet. If you're following me on Instagram, I tend to post these on Instagram first and let everyone know they're in the shop so they get the first chance of grabbing one if they want. This is a princess on a unicorn with her castle, a pink zipper, pink tassel, pink on the inside. So if you have someone or yourself that really love princesses in pink, I've got my label on the side this time. The ones that have it on the front are basically because I forgot to sew the labels into the side of the pouch before sewing the pouches together. So I can just hand stitch those on afterwards. Now all the sizes of these pouches will be listed under their listing in the Etsy shop because of some randomness of the fabric. I have a more of a shorter yet longer pouch. I put a teal tassel to match the kitten and on the inside I went with blue. There's some more kitties, more towards the aqua. I picked a green tassel to go with this kitty here. This one has some mice and some fish on it. This one just has the kitty cats. Because when you have the blue fabric out, you just go ahead and put it in every pouch you have. Here's my favorite. This one has a sewing machine and sewing notions and a really fun yellow color with a yellow tassel, gray zipper, and I went with that fun green on the inside. So you have your sewing machine here that you can see really easily. And then this one has scissors and thread and pins and rulers and all of that. This one I really love. Now I know some of you are really gonna like this. This one has some flowers and vines and ribbon on it. I was able to match the tassel to the flowers in a red color, gray zipper, and I went with a tan lining to go 
with the ribbon here. Now my linings don't always match, but sometimes it's fun when you're able to. I had one piece of this eyeglass fabric that was sent to me and this was it. This is the exact size of the piece that I have. There's nothing extra, nothing left over. I couldn't even use it on the back. So I just put a yellow on the back to pull out the yellow glasses, gray tassel, and more of the yellow fabric on the inside. So again, all of these will be in the shop if anybody is interested. The last thing that I worked on is in my container. I am storing all of our quilt blocks in here, whether they're my patron ones or the YouTube. I was gonna keep them separate, but then I thought, why use up two of these containers when I can use just one and keep them together? These containers are for scrapbooking generally, but they're great to put your quilting project in. You can put your pattern in and some of your fabrics and stuff like that. Or if maybe if I was doing a marathon of these, I could put it in there if I wanted to, but I generally use a basket for those. And then I put in a manila envelope so that I can separate when I show you the, the blocks, I'll put this down on top and then anything above it, I'll know that I haven't shown you yet because I don't know what I've shown you. Did I show you this one already? I think I showed you the log cabin. Yes, because I was trying to get the light to go through. So you've already seen that log cabin of batiks. And then with my patrons, I did the nine patch. I almost said a six patch, but this is a six and a half inch nine patch versus the 12 and a half inch. Then between the live stream and the Friday morning tutorial. So thank you everyone for hanging out with me on the live stream. I had so much fun. It's from Friday's tutorial. We chose polka dots for our 12 and a half inch block. Now, normally I say sometimes like polka dots are crazy and the polka dots are all different sizes. I like that some of them are like, there, there's two reds and then there's two purples and two blues. So I thought that is fun to kind of duplicate them a little bit, yet the polka dots are different sizes. So I think this is really fun. Just moving it around and changing it, I think, I, I know, I like the, the orange one on top, the orange polka dots. It seems to it seems to make the block just stand out a little bit more for me. And that's kind of funny since maybe it's because the polka dots are larger in the orange. But I had a lot of fun chatting with everyone and working on our blocks. I'm glad everyone enjoyed the idea of doing quilt blocks on our live stream so that we have two quilt blocks of two different sizes to the best of our ability throughout the year each month. So I know babbling in weird ways that don't make sense. I've decided that yes, I'm going to, and every Friday morning before the live stream, so on the first and third Friday of the month, there will be two sizes of the block, a six and a half inch and a 12 and a half inch. Now as best of my ability on the live streams, we will do both sizes but if it becomes more of a complicated, like say maybe we're doing the Dresden plate. Now that's gonna take up most of our time. So to do two sizes is really not going to work out. But if it's something that as we're doing a live stream and you guys decide you have to see the smaller size, I can always do another live stream. We can do it for the next live stream that's coming up and bump those blocks up. But you will always have that Friday morning video that will walk you through Did you hear that? It sounded like a bird flapping its wings in here. That was weird. Anyway, so you always have the numbers and you'll have that tutorial, even if we don't get to it on the live stream. And I think that's the way I wanna go. I like having the quick tutorial, well, it's never quick, but I like having the non-live tutorial in the morning. And then that way, if you don't wanna watch the live stream or you want, People like to enjoy the live stream for the community and the conversation and people like to just chat and they sometimes they'll just put me in the background and listen to me chatter on because they know I can ramble on and on for two hours. Kind of scary, but I can do it. I never thought I could, not that long, basically talking to myself, but I can do it as we see here. 
but they just listen to it in the background while they're doing other things or they might be sewing something else. Then they know they have that quicker tutorial that's a half hour, hopefully, or less, depending on the block and the difficulty and the pieces. They'll have that Friday morning that they can always refer back to and not try to fast forward past the jibber jabber and the side conversations on a live stream. I'm gonna put my manila envelope in, close up my container. You ever notice that these don't really close that well? They kind of, they hold a little bit, but they're, they're either really, really hard to snap or they just, they're just barely holding on. Like the left one here is popping up and the right one's holding on. I guess they're not meant to be really carried around more than like this. They're not meant to be super sturdy. So thank you for hanging out with me for, oh, at least 20 minutes today. I have a nice little running timer on my phone to let me know how long we've been jibber jabbering. I think 20 minutes once I knock out a couple of little things that you guys didn't notice like this. You know, maybe I was just doing something goofy or putting my tea away or something like that. So about 20 minutes is not too bad for Whip It Wednesday, I don't think. You guys do like the chattier Whip It Wednesday and the more condensed sometimes on the tutorials. So I try to give you a little bit of both. But let's face it, we are who we are. I am who I am. And you are going to get chitter chatter no matter what video you're watching. So thanks for hanging out with me. You have your code word is beach. Leave it down below in the comments and I will randomly pull at least one person to send them. Did I say I'm going to send them the beach postcard or am I going to surprise you? I will send you the beach postcard since that is our code word for today. So I will set this aside to make sure I don't give it away to anyone else. I like to put it in a little container I have right up against the wall. So every time I see it, I'll be like, I got to draw a name. Gotta draw a name. Now, I usually draw it sometime along the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some people watch the videos right away and other, people's, other people don't get to them until the weekend. So I think I will go ahead and pull it on Sunday. I'm also going to pull the winner on Sunday for a fabric postcard for the purple mat that I have that video of the unboxing on that. So if you go back to that video, if you find my pinned comment, great. If you don't leave a comment anywhere, go to the there's a shop that's linked down below in the description box and in the pinned comment tell me which mat which color which size would you choose it's been really fun to see what colors everyone would like i love the purple i love the black with the blue but i don't know i might want to choose the bright green one and i didn't notice that there was a red one it must have just flew right by me but someone said that they love the red one so there are a variety of colors to choose from and there's just a plain old green one if you'd like there's a 10 percent discount code in that pinned comment if you'd like to purchase anything from that shop so thank you so much for looking i will pull at least one winner from that video one winner from this video and depending on the amount of comments i might pull more so thanks for hanging out with me thanks for playing along with any of the little crazy things i come up with and i'll see you guys next time bye